Hi there, Booktube, and welcome to uh, a wrap-up for May and uh, a book haul. And the reason I've done a two-in-one is because all the books I talk about uh, in my wrap-up today uh, have got uh, weekly wrap-up videos uh, going into greater detail. So I'm literally going to hold the book up and uh, say uh, what rating I gave it. And uh, after that, I'm going to get into my book haul, which I'm quite excited about. Right, OK, so this is the wrap-up part. The Disappearance Boy. Neil Bartlett, which I gave five stars to. Uh, I will post all the links to the various wrap-up uh, videos in the description box. The President's Gardens, Mushin Al Ramli, I gave four and a half to, a book from Iraq uh, that I saw Simon Savage talking about and he said his mum had recommended it to him and uh, that was good enough for me. My Documents, Alejandro Zambra, uh, two stars only, I'm afraid. It was a book of short stories, uh, and unlike Multiple Choice, which is a novel of his I read that was very inventive and formally uh, took uh, risks, this I found sort of rather uninvolving set of stories that didn't do anything. Um, Border Districts, Gerald Murnane, who's an Australian writer, this is an extraordinary book about memory and, and sort of how our memories are formed and you know how we can access them and... and uh, I gave this four and a half. The only reason I didn't give it five was because it just felt very subjective and personal to Monet and it wasn't always possible to enter the memories that he was talking about because they were his memories, but how how he sort of forensically sort of, um, like an archaeological dig, how he sort of recovered them and talked about them was extraordinary. Nutshell by Ian McEwan. Well, this is a very uh, jolly four-star read, very entertaining, very good central voice of an unborn fetus. Um, recommended by Beth Chats Books and having sort of given up on McEwen I'm rather glad this sort of forms a, a, a sort of access return to Ian McEwen for me so four stars for that The Cut, Anthony Cartwright uh, this is supposed to be uh, the sort of first significant uh, post-Brexit referendum novel and I found it rather disappointing and uh, three stars Mosaic Man, Ronald Sukunik, uh which originally was sort of uh, swept up in my sort of postmodern US author hall and uh, was really, really good. I mean, it is sort of postmodern in style, but that, that wasn't really significant. It was an author in search of his identity, both as a writer and as a, an American Jew, what that had in common with European Jews from history uh, who've been largely largely erased, uh, and, and Israel. And it was, it was a really good read, four and a half stars. And on to three non-fiction books, which have a dedicated video to non-fiction. Uh, the second book in the a very short introduction series that I've read, uh, this is on literary theory, uh, which I thought sort of made a case against itself uh, in chapter one and never out-argued out of that paper bag. So two stars. Um, Peter Hanke, The Jukebox and Other Essays on Storytelling. Well, they're not essays on storytelling, they're storytelling. Uh, two stars. And finally, Galen Strawson, Things That Bother Me, Death, Freedom, The Self, etc. This is a book on philosophy, and this is superb. I gave it four and a half stars. It would have been five, but because it's been put together from stuff that he's obviously published elsewhere, I felt the editor rather cheated us in a couple of places through sort of repetition and a, a sort of bolted on last chapter. But, but Strawson is a remarkable thinker and writer, and I thought this was terrific. So, I will post links to all of those in the description box, so uh, I do talk at length about all of them. And on to my book haul. So, uh, this is Orana Dasgupta Solo, which I'm currently reading. I'm two-thirds of the way through this, and I'm really enjoying this. I think I've discovered a new author uh, for me, so I'm going to go back and, and read you know, pretty much everything by this guy. What's amazing to me is it's sort of quite conventional storytelling. You know, it's not doing anything sort of extravagant, which is not normally my, my um, you know, fare of choice. But, you know, I'm, I'm so into this book. It's great. Uh, yeah, so Philip Roth died a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I've read about five or six Roth books. I've read The Counter Life. I've read pa American Pastoral, which is in my all-time top ten. I've read The Plot Against America. I've read what, either the last or the penultimate one he did. It was very short, which had an ingenious um, uh, idea that it's basically the protagonist was sort of listing all his ailments as he approached the end of his life. And that was sort of the book sort of formed around that. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. Um, 
and I've read one more, which I also can't remember what it's called, but I've never actually heard it. You know, Philip Ross published, what, 30 novels? I've never ever heard of this one. Um, I can't remember quite how I came to see it last week, but I thought, oh, wow. Um, a, The Great American Novel, which is uh, a sort of a perpetual uh, holy grail for Americans uh, and literary critics in America, you know, who who has written The Great American Novel. I assume Roth is satirising it in this. And it's also about baseball. Um, which uh, I'm a fan of. I'm just going to read you the back. The Rupert Mundys, once the greatest baseball team in America, are now in terminal decline. Their lineup filled with a disreputable assortment of old men, drunks, and even amputees, <laughs> which is mind bending for baseball. Around them, baseball itself seems to be collapsing, brought down by a bizarre mixture of criminality, stupidity, and the great communist conspiracy aimed at the very heart of the American way of life. In this hilarious and wonderfully eccentric novel, Philip Roth turns his attention to one of the most beloved of all American rituals, baseball. Players, tycoons and the paying public are all targets as Roth satirises the dense tapestry of myths and legends that have grown up around the great American pastime. So this sounds right up my street. I think uh, a way for me to honour Philip Roth, so I'm not going to read all 30 of his books. 1973, that was published. Ponds by Claire Louise Bennett. Now, I said, and I said at greater length, that my documents by Alejandro Zamba was really disappointing to Star Reed for short stories. And you'll notice, same cover type, cover style, I think. Of course, this is published by the same publishing house, Fitzcarraldo, who uh, I'm, I was sort of, I'm slightly concerned about their recent output because I loved all the early output. And this, uh, no, holding out the wrong one, this has disappointed. And I wasn't interested in reading the book that ultimately went on to win the Man International Booker Prize. So that may say more about my taste. But anyway, two two people, including Neil Griffiths, uh, absolutely uh, love this book. This is one of the early ones, and it is short stories. So again, I'm sort of slightly down on short stories, but... You know, I've I've only heard really good things about this, and it might re hopefully restore my faith in Fitzcarraldo. So that's Pond, Filthy English by Jonathan Meads. Oh, well, Jonathan Meads is uh, you know a national treasure in Britain. He's a multi-talented guy on art, architecture, language, uh, and occasionally he writes novels. And I've read his novels Pompeii and The Fowler Family Business, and they're great. Uh, and I think this is probably his only other work of fiction, which is a book of short stories written in the mid eighties. Uh, and I was sort of prompted to to um, go and see what was available by Meads because he did a wonderful BBC documentary last week that I saw on jargon and how jargon is used to shut down communication. And you know, I love Jonathan Meads so much, and I haven't read this, so I'm going to. Right, A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara. So this was recommended by Sean, the book maniac. I think it's his second favourite book of all time. And it's set in Chechenia and around the struggle there. And so I watched him talk about it in relation to his uh, epigraph tag. And uh, I'm sort of fairly obsessed with Chechenia as well. So um, I hadn't heard of this novel. So uh, I ordered it straight away. And... Um, Curtis Films and Books uh, won a copy of this in Sean's uh, Celebrate 2000 followers, 1500 followers, or whatever Sean's sort of anniversary was. So Curtis and I are sort of planning on a buddy read, which will be my first ever buddy read. And we're both Luddites. We don't use Snapchat or any of those other instant communications. It will be formal epistolary uh, done through email. So I'm looking forward to that. And finally, uh, this is in my uh, TBR Pile, but it will not be a recent uh, upcoming read. Look at that, thousand pages. Foster Wallace's The Infinite Jest. So I've read um, Foster Wallace's non fiction on hip hop, and I've read the short story collection of The Girl with Curious Hair, and neither of them particularly led me to sort of venerate Foster Wallace uh, as he is absolutely venerated. But I spent a couple of weeks watching videos uh, around his death. Um, you know, sort of people speaking and paying tribute, including his sister and his sort of college roommate, who, you know, probably one of his closest friends. Um, as part of my uh, research for my little piece on suicide literature, uh, which I uploaded to BookTube, and I'll post a link to that. Because of all the writers I mentioned there, Foster Wallace is the one I'm least acquainted with. Um, and in watching these videos, I thought, OK, now is the time to take on you know, to admit this book, which I've always held at bay in the same way as I held American Psycho at bay for 20 years. And the only reason I ended up reading that is because I got a free copy for its anniversary, 20th anniversary, I think. 
And the other book I sort of wish I'd kept at bay is 2666 by Roberto Bolano, which I read and bitterly regretted it. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I've, I've been told that this is a book uh, that sort of, you know, uh, elevates the footnote into uh, <laughs> uh, into the highest thing. And anyway, I'm looking forward to reading it. I'm just not sure when, because obviously you need a block of time to do justice to this. I imagine it's fairly an intense read. So that's my book haul. Um, Solo is fantastic. I will hopefully finish that this weekend. That has to wait till Curtis's copy arrives by snail mail from Japan, where Sean has sent it from. Uh, two books of short stories. So um, I will read this one before this one, um, just uh, for the reasons I've mentioned, which means that Philip Roth, the great American novel, is absolutely next on the, on the lineup. Uh, with one from an older to be read pile which will follow, which is um, an author sent it to me and I said I would read it and review it and I haven't been uh, negligent. So I shall do that after Philip Roth. So there you have it. Thanks very much. Till next time. <laughs>